Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuru Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamahyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutta Paragamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavangscha Shri Rupam Sagrajadham Sahagana Raganatanditam Tang Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lavita Shri Vishakhanditamscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Itinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nibhishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Mancha Kalpaturubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Vya Eva Chakpatitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namo Namaha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Rishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gauravakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so again, welcome to everyone. Thank you all for coming um, and uh, coming from all the different places you are coming, <laughs> including Argentina, Hong Kong, Germany, Delhi, uh, Croatia, um, um, UK, uh, where else? Belgium. Um, Serbia, Serbia, <laughs> Slovenia, <laughs> um, and Poland, of course. Dubai. Uh, huh? Dubai? You're back in Dubai now, huh? Yes, very much. Actually, I'm back. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Indeed. Okay, we're singing Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's song number eight of Atmani Vedana, mm. uh, the last of the songs of the section Atmani Vedana of, excuse me, uh, Sharanagati. And uh, this this song has six verses. We can read the translation first. He, uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is addressing the Lord. I have become supremely joyful by surrendering myself at your lotus feet. Unhappiness has gone away, and there are no more anxieties. I see joy in all directions. 
your two lotus feet are reservoirs of immortal nectar where one may live free from sorrow and fear. I have found peace there now and have given up the fear of worldly existence. I shall render service in your household and not endeavor to enjoy the fruits of that service, but rather I shall strive for whatever pleases you, fully devoted to your lotus feet. Troubles encountered in your service shall be the cause of great happiness, for in your devotional service, joy and sorrow are equally great riches. Both destroy the misery of ignorance. I have completely forgotten all past history by feeling uh, great joy in my mind. I am most certainly yours and you are indeed mine. What need is there of any other treasure? Bhaktivinoda, diving into the ocean of bliss, devotes all his efforts for your service and dwells in your house according to your wishes. Okay, let's try this. Uh, I believe you all got the link so you can follow along and sing along. <laughs> I think I'll try a little lower pitch this time. <clears throat> Atma nivedana tua pade kodi oinu ha Oinu Padama Shuki Atmani Vedana Tuapan Kori Oinu Padama Shuki Dukka Du Dukka Dure Gelo Chintana Rahilo Ja Chodi Ke ananda deki dukha dure gel chintana rahilo chori ke ananda deki ashoka abhaya amrita adare tomara charana dvaya Abhaya Amrita Adan Tomara Charana Dvaya Tahite Ekona Vishamala Bhya Charinu Bhavera Bhaya Tahite Ekona Vishamala Bhya Charinu Bhavera Bhaya Tomara Shangshare Kori Bhosevane Nahivo Palera Bhagi Tomara Shangshare Kori Bhosevane Nahivo Palera Bhagi Tava Shukha Jahe Kori Bojatana Hoje Padde Anu Ragi Tava Shukha Jahe Kori Bojatana Hoje Padde Ragi Tomara Sevai Dukha Hoya Jato Seoto Paramahasuka 
तुम्हारा सेवा दुखा हो या जाता से उठे परमाशुका सेवा सुखा दुखा परमा संपादा नशे अविद्या दुखा पूर्व इतिहास भूली न सका सेवा सुखा भेजे माने पूर्व इतिहास भूली न सका सेवा सुखा भेजे माने आमी तो थामा तुमी तो आमरा की काजा आपरा दाने आमी तो थामा तुमी तो आमरा की काज आपरा दाने वाकाते बिनो ना आनंदे डुबिया तुम्हारा सेवा ना थाने वाकाते बिनो ना आनंदे डुबिया तुम्हारा सेवा तारे सब चेष्टा को दे तबक इच्छा मातो ताकिया तुम्हारा गारे को दे तबक इच्छा मातो ताकिया तुम्हारा गारे आत्मा निवेदन तुआ पालन करे होइन भारमा शुके आत्मा निवेदन तुआ पाले करे होइन भारमा शुके दुखा दूरे गलो चिंता ना रहीलो छोड़ी के आनंद देखी दुखा दूरे चिंता न रही लो छोड़ी के आनंद देखी आते किशन आते किशन 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 आते 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Nitai Gaur, Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Hari Bo, 
Shiva Bhakti no Takura ki jai, Shiva Prabhupada ki jai, Anantakoti Vaishnavarinda ki jai. So again, translation with looking at the Bengali. <clears throat> I've become supremely joyful by surrendering myself at your lotus feet. Atmani Vedana, of course, means self-surrender. Tuva Pade Kori, Kori means Koriya, having made Atmani Vedana, having e executed the process of Atmani Vedana, uh, to whom or to where? Uh, to the lotus feet of the Lord, Tuva Pade. Hoinu Paramasuki, there has come uh, great joy or the supreme joy. I have become supremely joyful. Hoi nu. Unhappiness has gone away, and there are no more anxieties. I see joy in all directions. Dukkha dure gelo. Dur, of course, far, and dukkha, misery. Gelo is uh, past tense, has gone. Uh, Chinta, chinta um, means uh, cares or worries. Uh, na rahilo, uh, no, does not remain, does not stay. And then chodike, dik, dik means direction. And cho is four, <laughs> four directions. Uh, so it means in all directions. Ananda deki, I see ananda everywhere. I see bliss everywhere. Ashoka, Abhaya, Amrita, Adhara, Tomara, Charanadvaya. Your two lotus feet are reservoirs of immortal nectar, Tomara, Charana. Um, Amrita, Adhara, uh, Adhara, reservoir or support. Um, where one may live free from sorrow and fear. Uh, Ashoka and Abhaya. I have found peace there now and have given up the fear of worldly existence. Tahate <clears throat> Akon, Akona, now <clears throat> Vishram Labhya having obtained labhya, vishrama, peace, charinu um, bhaver boy, I've given up, boya, fear, charinu, I have given up, the fear of bhava, bhava means material existence, mm. of material existence, bhavera. And then the third verse, I shall render service in your household and not endeavor to enjoy the fruits of that service. Tomar Shongshare. We usually think the word Shongshare just means repeated birth and death. In, Beng in Bengali, Shongshare means also the household. Mm, there may be some connection there. Uh, but here, uh, Bhaktivinoda is saying, your samsara, <laughs> in your household, koribo sevan, I will do, future tense, koribo, sevan, uh, seva. Nahi, nahi bo paler bagi. Um, so pala that is fruit, nahi bo, there will not be, or I will not be. Yeah, this is... Uh, first person, I will not be. What? I will not be a bhagi. I will not be a partaker, because bhaga 
uh, means portion, from which we get the word Bhagavan, uh, and uh, the possessor of portions, poss possessor of shares. And he's saying, I won't be a Bhagi. I won't be a, a shareholder. I won't enjoy the fruits. Tava sukha jahe kori go jatana. Um, rather, I shall strive for whatever pleases you. <clears throat> jatana, uh, I believe, means endeavor. Koribo, I will make that endeavor. Tavasuka, your pleasure. Uh, whatever, jahe. Hoye pade anuragi. So instead of being a bagi, I will be an anuragi. <laughs> I will be one who uh, follows with attachment. Raga means attachment. Uh, to what? To, to your feet. Troubles encountered in your service shall be the cause of great happiness. Tomar seva dukkha hoy jato. Se o to paramasuka. So, in your service, Tomar sevai. Dukkha hoy jato. Whatever dukkha happens, say, oh, that, that very misery, <clears throat> to, indeed, paramasuka is, is my greatest happiness. <laughs> and then, taking it, taking it uh, to the next le level, seva sukha dukkha paramasampada. Um, whether it's sukha or dukkha, it's seva, it's your service. And so that's my sampada, that's the highest treasure, parama sampada, nashaye, uh, avidya dukkha. And this destroys uh, the, uh, the misery of ignorance. And number five, I have completely forgotten all past history <laughs> by feeling great joy in my mind. Purva itihasa, bhulino shakal, seva sukha peye mane. So, um, bhula, uh, bhula means forget, bhulinu, I have forgotten. What, what has he forgotten? Shakal, everything. <laughs> uh, what, everything? No, purva itihas, uh, the history of the past. Itihasa, uh, sometimes the Mahabharata and the Ramayana are referred to as itihasa. And this word is sometimes translated as history. Uh, it literally is itiha. Asa, thus indeed it happened. Um, so, seva sukha, pe, sukha peye, uh, receiving the joy of service, money in my mind. Ami totomar, I am most certainly yours. Uh, yours. Uh, that to again is an uh, emphasis word. Ami tomar, ami to tomar. I am really yours. To me to amar, and you are really mine. Ki kaj aparadhane. <clears throat> what need is there of any other treasure? Dhan, dana means treasure. Apara, another. Uh, ki kaj. Uh, kaj means work, I think. Uh, so what, what work is needed to get some other treasure? Something like that. Um, and then finally, bhakti vinod, diving into the ocean of bliss, anande dubya, tomar sevar tare, um, devotes all his efforts for your service. Shava cheshta, cheshta means efforts. Um, 
tava ichamato uh, only uh, for your desire takai tomar gare gore uh, gar uh, means house in your house and we've heard from uh, earlier songs bhaktinod thakur is making this declaration he's saying um, my house is actually your house <laughs> uh, and so on manasa deha geha my mind uh, my body and my house geha uh, it's all yours so now he's saying it's your house takiya living staying in your house and this is uh, this word is i suspect a little bit playing on um, Bhaktivinoda Thakur's title. Whether or not by the time he wrote this song, uh, he was generally known as Thakur, I don't know, um, but, but possibly we'd have to look at the biography. Um, I believe he wrote these songs um, around the years 19, uh, 1893 to 95 or so. In any case, it's to me, it makes that kind of a resonance. Bhaktivinod Thakur, Bhaktivinod Takiya. He's, he remains, he stays um, in the house of the Lord. So a couple of things we can notice from this song. This is the final of this group. And mm, we see in all of the groups of songs of each of the sections, there's a kind of progression. I may have mentioned this before. Uh, they, they, I would say the progression is from outside to inside. He's going uh, from uh, a more external position to a more internal, we say more intimate uh, position. This may become more apparent uh, with some of the other groups of songs. But we see this here in the sense that uh, it's going from this very strong lamentation in the beginning, in the beginning songs about, about his past life. And now with this final one of the Atmani Vedana, he's saying, now I feel I can forget all of that history. Uh, he's made his confession, he's expressed his regret, his remorse, uh, and he's confessed it to the Lord. And now he feels relieved in his heart. And in this uh, condition of great relief, he, he's expressing his joyfulness. Uh, and in his joyfulness, he also has a sense uh, in the fifth verse, third line, Amito Tomar Toma Tumi To Amar. Uh, I am yours and you are mine. And uh, this is the sometimes referred to as the sense of mamata, the sense of ownership of the Lord. There's, there's uh, this uh, material sense of ownership, aham mama iti aham mameti uh, which of course we're trying to become free from and there is uh, how we become free from that is we transfer it to the Lord and in the advanced stage of bhakti one has a sense of ownership of the Lord there's a sense of he belongs to me I belong to him he belongs to me and there's even a sense of exclusive exclusivity there. Um, he is he is only mine. <laughs> uh, so so this is nice. We're ending this section. We may have been worried. Are all the songs going to be so much lamentation? Uh, no. Uh, here we see that Bhaktivinoda is very very joyful and he's inviting us to participate in his joyfulness simply by the fact that uh, he is uh, sharing this experience with him with us 
there's also uh, still an expression of the fut future, there's a use of future tense. So he's also making, um, he's, he's expressing vows here. This is what I'm going to do. Um, and, but at the same time, is a sense of confidence. Uh, it's not that I'll see if I can do this, maybe I can do it, would be nice. Uh, but no, I am going to do this. Uh, these are uh, my determinations. So it's also a very nice expression of that, of determination. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur Ki Jai. Okay, Hare Krishna. Um, well, let's see. Is anyone sharing with us today something? Anything? Uh, no, Guru Maharaj, no one, no one applied for sharing. No one signed up. Everyone's being very humble and quiet. Any spontaneous, uh, oh, just now thinking, oh, actually, <laughs> something, something, uh, in particular from this last week you would like to share Dira Lalita uh, we don't hear you yet there Okay. Well, I was debating with myself, should I say something or not today? But I was thinking maybe it's not uh, <laughs> that inspiring as we're, as we're hearing from you very much every week. And uh, I was just thinking, uh, just to share something little um, that I'm reading in this past week. I'm reading a book from um, written by Sitala Dasi, and it's mm. called The Glorious Life of Srila Narottam Das Thakur. Oh, yeah. And that's the book. Yes. I have a copy of it here, but I have to confess, I haven't read it yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I've, I, this, this book I would warmly recommend. It's like a, reading a novel <laughs> uh, of the uh, of life of Srila Narottam Das Thakur. And I must say what it, it does for me, it brings me um, much, much close, closer to Lord Chaitanya and all the parampara that comes from him and the ways of... Uh, of surrender of Shilanat and Das Thakur, how, how, how special it was when he received the uh, mercy from the river of Padmavati that was waiting there for him of Lord oh, yeah. Chaitanya. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I only came to the, to the, uh, uh, um, when, when, uh, uh, in the middle of the book where, um, uh, Natam Das Thakur, uh, got instruction from his, Guru Maharaj Lokanath Swami to um, a spread to leave Vrindavan, which he didn't like. <laughs> so it seems to me that whatever was happening in Sri Lanaratam Das Thakur's life was, he was just about to do what he wanted to do and that was taken away. So he was giving another task and another task. And it, it, it seems a, a, a bit painful, but um, it's so so sort of so glorious that he he he's such an exalted personality. I, I don't even have words to, to, to glorify him. But he's now back into his home Ketori. Ketri. Ketri, yeah. Mm. After after the um, manuscripts were um, stolen <laughs> yeah. uh, on on his mission with Shyamananda and Shini was to spread um Chaitanya's words. So I would only recommend this book. Um, it's it's really a readable 
and uh, it feels fantastic. <laughs> Brings okay. me to Mataji, can you show to the camera? Yes. The glorious life of <coughs> Shila Narutandas Thakur. Yeah. Yes. I actually, a friend of mine gave it to me to read. I didn't buy it. And it's, it's, it's very inspiring. <laughs> nice. Okay. Now you make me uh, understand that I should read it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this reminds me of the time I visited Kateri Gram. This goes back uh, some decades. Uh, I went there with um, my godbrother Kiranas Prabhu, whom I haven't heard from in ages. Uh, he speaks very fluent Bengali, um, American, but he he learned very fluent Bengali. So uh, he invited me to come with him. We went there to Ketrigram, which is in present-day Bangladesh, on the bank of the Padmavati, Padma, Padma River. And um, it's, it's this kind of very remote place, as I remember, just fields, really, a few houses. And uh, one thing that particularly struck me was that we came sort of, I guess it was in the evening, uh, we arrived and fortunately Kiranas Prabhu spoke uh, good Bengali. So we just, we just knocked on someone's door <laughs> and asked if we could stay with him the night. And they said, sure. <laughs> I mean, there was no hesitation, not like, who are these Western people and what are they about? And no, there were no questions. It was just, yeah, please come in. And they, they accommodated us, uh, you know, very nicely. Um, I, I just was <laughs> so amazed by that. I thought, yeah, yeah, this is culture. <laughs> <laughs> Srila Prabhupada would say, you know, uh, here we have a very, what we call duty conscious dog. Uh, he's, she is barking so much at night. And Prabhupada would speak like that. In the West, you go somewhere and the dog will come barking at you. Yeah, that's how we have to, I don't know if we have to be that way, but that's how we are here. Um, yeah, and we walked uh, to mm, oh, what, it was some some area. I think there was some sort of temple there, uh, which is said to have been where the uh, Kateri Gram festival happened. Uh, this is something which is described in quite some detail in. Mm. Uh, Narahari Chakravarti Thakur's uh, book, uh, Bhakti Ratnakar, uh, which is telling the story, if you like, of uh, the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Bengal in the generation after the Goswamis. And as you mentioned, that this incident of the theft of the manuscripts, it was Shivas, uh, Srinivas Acharya, uh, Shamananda Pandit, and Narottam Das Thakur um, went with, as I recall, it said that they had guards with them, uh, a few guards, and they had this wagon like a wagon full with, uh, with like a big chest or two chests full of manuscripts. <laughs> and they're on their way to, uh, to Navadvip. 
and they get um, they get quite far without any problem, but then they come uh, into what is now uh, southern uh, West Bengal. This is uh, presently, I think, it, the area is called Midnapur area. I don't know the what the district is called, Bankura maybe, and. Uh, and the, all the all, all the manuscripts were taken. And you know, keep in mind these are handwritten manuscripts. How long does it take to write by hand uh, any book? And these are so many books of the uh, Goswamis and Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami. Uh, are being brought to um, to Bengal for the Bengal devotees, and there's a there's a reason for them to bring them. Um, well, you can say obviously they just want to spread uh, the teachings of the six of the Goswamis. Well, yes, they they were concerned in. Uh, they were the devotees in Brindavan were concerned because in Bengal there were so many different ideas going on, so many different uh, we we would say philosophies, so many different ideas of who is Lord Chaitanya and what is um, Bhakti Yoga and so on. And, uh, you know, the years are passing since Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has departed. Uh, and so how to bring everyone together? Uh, they want to bring everyone together, first of all, with this literature. But then what happens? It all gets um, stolen. And the story is, of course, that Rajbir Hambir was, uh, he was some sort of king, but he seems to have been also some sort of a dacoit king, <laughs> robber king, uh, you know, sending his henchmen uh, and, and getting this, what was truly a treasure, but he was thinking it may be, you know, some gold and such material treasures. Uh, and so, after this happens, Srinivas Acharya decides, okay, I'm going to stay here and find out, I'm going to find our, our, our lost manuscripts. And you too can continue on. So um, Narutam Das Thakur and Shyamananda uh, Pandit, Shyamananda Prabhu continued on. Srinivas Acharya remained. And uh, he made himself into a kind of detective. And he would go into the market and listen, just talking to people and just getting, getting to know who's who and what's going on. And then some, some mention may have leaked out. Through, some people were, you know, doing some chatting and something about uh, about uh, a great uh, catch having been uh, received and brought to the king. <laughs> so then Srinivas Acharya goes to the king. And he comes there as, as a traveling Brahmin, that's what he was. So he came in uh, to the court uh, just to you know, like he's um, meeting the local king and they can exchange respects, something like that. And the story is that uh, sh the king, Rajvir Humbir, had a court pundit who just at that time that uh, Srinivas was uh, coming to visit, just at that time, this court pundit was giving some recitation from Srimad Bhagavatam. 
And specifically, he was talking about Ras Lila. But Srinivas Acharya is hearing what this uh, pundit is saying, and he gets very quickly very upset. So much so that he just stands up and uh, begins to refute the misunderstanding of this court pundit. And he does so in such a powerful way that Rajbir Hambir becomes his disciple. There's some more details I don't remember, but there's some, some back and forth. Uh, uh, but eventually, Rajbir Hambir surrenders to Shiva's Thakur uh, and, of course, reveals. Mm, what is the treasure that had been stolen? And so all the books have been recovered and uh, are uh, eventually come then from there to, uh, to the main community of, God, of the Vaishnavas, Gaudiya Vaishnavas. But Srinivas Acharya apparently stays for a longer time and becomes of essentially the Raj Guru uh, of, of Vishnupur, of, of the king, Raj Bir Hambir. And uh, there's uh, considerable historical, art historical research that has been done uh, by one lady scholar named Pika Ghosh. She's written a book on the subject uh, of uh, the the Krishna, the Radha Krishna temples of Vishnupur. Uh, there are many temples in that area. They were building these temples before Srinivas Acharya came, but it seems, I don't know, they were more like Vishnu uh, temples or so, but uh, apparently Srinivas Acharya inspired this king in specifically to turn uh, his devotion to Krishna, and more specifically, Radha Krishna. So you can th see these uh, very traditional brick temples in uh, Vishnupur today, some of them. Yes, and then uh, at Keturigram, uh, that festival that uh, happened was said to be the first Gore Purnima festival after the departure of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So imagine this is some, something like, uh, they say, 50 years, half a century after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has left the world. There's been this sort of quiet time and then uh, Narutam decides we're going to have a festival <laughs> and we're going to bring everyone together. Janava Devi, uh, the wife of Nityananda Prabhu, is uh, at this time the really the leader of the Vaishnavas, of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Janava Devi. Uh, and she sends her command, let everyone come. And so they come from all directions. They, of course, it takes uh, first several weeks, if not months, just to communicate the message. Uh, there was no Facebook, there was no WhatsApp. <clears throat> So, uh, and they all came. So many, so many people came from uh, all directions. And they celebrated and they installed uh, several sets of deities, uh, Radha Krishna deities, which some of them or all of them can be located presently where they are. Um, and they chanted and they danced and they chanted and they danced. And uh, according to 
um, Nahari Chakravarti Thakur, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Panchatattva appeared, literally appeared amongst the devotees. They were, they were singing uh, so intensely uh, that the Lord himself appeared. Mm. Srila Narottam Das Thakura Ki Jai. Jai. Thank you very much, Kormala. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Anyone else? Any spontaneous sharing of anything? Don't be shy. Hemangi uh, Gopi Mataji said, saying that she would like to share something. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. What is? Oh, I would like also to share some a very amazing book. It's very, very huge, and it's like um, very recently came out of the press. It's Bhagavad Purana, and it's um, retelled actually, whole Bhagavatam, all 12 chapters. Uh, and it is retelled by uh, Purna Prajanadas, but it is translated into Croatian language by uh, Sundarananda Prabhu. So gotcha. it is, it's very huge. It's about uh, 900 pages. Oh. It's really yeah. nice retelled. And now it's available also in Croatian. <laughs> Look, can you, oh, can you, um, can you open it to see one page? I want to see the size of the print. It's, yes. Okay. So it's uh, just the translations. Is that yes. right? Yes, because it was retailed by Purna Prajana Das, probably in English. Purna yes. Pragya, yeah. Okay. And then uh, Sundarananda Prabhu translated into creation. Okay. And I start to read, it's really nice retailed, so nice. <laughs> and the letters are very huge, <laughs> so it's also good for... So it's uh, easy to read. Huh? Yes, it's easy to read. So I also recommend for devotees who are here, who are from Croatia or Bosnia, Serbia, it's really amazing. And it's okay. everything on the one place. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's for now, and I also, uh, for next time, I have some small short presentation. I didn't prepare for today, but for the next time, that's... Okay. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, this, uh, it's translation only, um, if I remember, it's kind of also, I don't know how much it's summarizing or straight translate. Maybe it's straight translating. So uh, just reading the verses straight is one way to read the Bhagavatam. Sometimes devotees get discouraged that, oh, uh, it's, it's too much and all these purports and, uh, you know, so they get bogged down, they get slowed down and then they stop. Um, but you can read the whole, you can read a whole chapter or more, just the verses, and in that way you get, you know, Sri Shuka Uvacha or Maitreya Uvacha or um, Narada Uvacha and so on. You get what they are saying, and then you can go back in due course of time, and you can uh, you can read uh, purports. So that's uh, that's something you can do. Now um, I want to get <clears throat> I want to presume unless there is anyone else who wants to share something spontaneously. Um, Ananda Mai. Um, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, I noticed on the Facebook uh, one um, Mela. It is Yamuna Lola. Do you know something about this? This is uh, Yuva Bajan Mela Trust uh, Palakat. Um, 
the devotees uh, singing uh, Rama Krishna. Um, I don't know. This is the past time uh, of um, uh, of Rama and uh, something. I don't know how to show it. I I share it from Facebook, but I don't know how to manage this to show you eventually. You don't know um, the devotees. I can't, I can't say anything myself about it. Maybe someone else knows something. I mean, there's any number of uh, groups out there on the internet uh, doing all kinds of things. Um, mm -hmm. it's, uh, this I found very, very nice. It's like I, I wanted to show, but I don't know. Uh, how I can manage this? Yeah, Moon. Screen share. You have a screen share, Mataji. Screen share the share screen share screen the green button at the bottom of uh -huh. your screen if you can see. Mm -hmm. And then you just share share your screen. That's it. Yeah, but uh, how I can go to the Facebook? If uh -huh. from first, first you need to open that that window. You need to open the Facebook window aside from Zoom. Once you have mm -hmm. everything what you want to show on screen, you just click share screen and select that particular window. So I should go outside from this. Uh, yeah. You can just put down, you can minimize, you can minimize Zoom and you can open the, like a, your browser, whichever mm -hmm. you're using and just open the Facebook page and open mm -hmm. the particular page. Okay. Once you are done, you can go back to Zoom with Alt Tab. <clears throat> While you're figuring that out, I'm going to go away. For, I'm going to go away for one minute and come back. <laughs> so. Okay, I have this uh, now. You have the Facebook page ready? Yeah, I have this uh, Yamuna Lola, Jamuna Lola. Okay, so just so uh, go back to Zoom. Yeah. And at the bottom of your Zoom window, you will have a one control ribbon. In that control ribbon, you have a share screen green button in the center. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay, I have this. So this is this. And just select the the, the window. You want to share. Okay. <laughs> Some sounds, I don't know. I think you should increase the volume of that particular video on the on the right corner. Um, what, uh, could you down down there? Yeah, yes, down there. You have a yes. It's already maximum. Uh -huh, okay, hmm. so we'll see what Guru Maharaj will say. <laughs> <laughs> they are singing about uh, Jamuna. <laughs> There's Kaliya uh, pastime. They have this deity of Kaliya inside. They dance uh, around this Kaliya. Um, it's quite... <laughs> In Indian style, there's a plenty yeah. of those such a groups so out of there, out there. Yeah. There's some this is called Lila Kirtan. This yeah. is a, some form of Lila Kirtan, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I see uh, uh -huh. Shaiva Tilak there, so I, I think that they're from Shaivism, like following Shaivism. They have huh? like Shaiva, they are Shaiva. Yeah, yeah, Shaiva. yeah. The four, uh, this was for me quite interesting because uh, they, they are, uh, 
uh, uh, singing about uh, Rama's pastimes and uh, Krishna's pastimes, with Kaliya. Yeah. South <laughs> Indian Shaivites, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So how to connect them? With <laughs> how to connect? Well. <laughs> Is there a connection? <laughs> the the the, um, the kumbha mela. Let's let's put it this way: the kumbha mela, uh, when it's uh, the full kumbha mela. I read one report um, some years ago of one of the one of the kumbha mela events, and it mentioned that there are some seventy thousand organizations that set up, uh, officially set up their tents and so on. So we know there's any number, you know, 20, 20 million, 30 million, uh, maybe more people coming and 70,000 different organizations. So, um, you know, welcome to Hinduism. <laughs> Yeah, but they they think about Vrindavan, about Kaliya, Rama pastimes. Yes. In twenty minutes, there are Rama pastimes, uh, singing, and so yeah. I was just wondering <laughs> how to connect this. Well, there's so many branches of sub branches of sub branches of different sampradayas. Mix mixtures. Yeah. We don't know which sampradaya that is. Um, I once visited um, the um, uh, the ashram in Puri of the uh, it's the headquarters of the Shankara Adi Shankara of the uh, Shankara Sampradaya. I just walked in one day uninvited and a large courtyard it was empty i went uh, to the back corner they had a little temple i went in and um everyone then i saw everyone is in one hall and they're all sitting and listening to someone speaking and i could overhear a little what they're speaking and they were describing i think it was damodar lila it was some Krishna Leela they were telling. So this is Shankara Sampradaya. And, um, you know, their, their own understanding. Um, if, you, if you get to the bottom of what they understand, you may find there is some, some greater or lesser degree of Mayavada <laughs> yeah. in their understanding. Uh, that you know, this uh, devotion is a very good thing um, for, in an instrumental way, instrumentally, it can help you to get liberation. And when you reach final liberation, uh, you no longer need this devotion because there's no one to, there's no distinction between you and Krishna. So no more place for devotion. Um, but then you'll find a whole, um, there's a whole spectrum of how, how people understand. And, um, and therefore, uh, we have to be careful not to just condemn uh, anyone who isn't uh, directly in our, in our line. Um, that's my personal feeling. There can be um, different ways of understanding. Of course, we know they're the major Vaishnav Sampradayas. Uh, um, and, and others may be influenced by the Vaishnavas unknowingly. And that may be a good thing. <laughs> so, I think I may have okay. mentioned that the other day. They had a Sikhas, you know. Two Sika just means Brahman. Sika. Oh, Sikhas, just means, yes. Yes. Sika yeah. simply yeah. means that they are Brahmins. Brahman yeah. does not mean Vaishnava. Vaishnava means Brahman, our acharyas insist. Uh, 
Yeah, but they had this threats also. Yeah. That is Brahman. Threat. Yeah. So yeah. they are they are following uh, they are fo following the Varna system. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. They yeah, may be they... smartas. They they could be smartas, smarta Brahmins. Generally, mm -hmm. today the followers of Shankara tend to be smarta. Um, but then we are Vaishnava smarta, because smarta simply means one who follows smriti, and we follow Vaishnava smriti. Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur explains that. Uh, that uh, yeah, he doesn't say we are smarta, but <laughs> he says we follow Vaishnava smriti, and that means uh, Vaishnava smarta. But the those we understand as smart Brahmins, they are, <clears throat> they are following uh, all of the smriti and sort of mixing. Uh, they are accepting the f the the five deities, uh, worshiping uh, five divinities. They with have the mm -hmm. implication, uh, generally, with the implication that uh, we will go beyond. Uh, these deities uh, to the non-differentiated Brahman. Yeah. But, my, uh, my, yeah. I, I don't know who these people are, but uh, they look like very nice people and they're glorifying Krishna and Rama, so that's very nice. Yeah, they had the deity of Kaliya and they were dancing around this Kaliya. Yeah. <laughs> Did so yeah. that's nice. <laughs> I noticed also in Vrindavan the Mayavadis were visiting Krishna Balaram temple. Oh yes, Sometimes they cannot so. resist. They yeah. cannot resist the ecstatic kirtan and this uh, service in Krishna Balaram Mandir. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hare Krishna. Okay. Well, shall we proceed with uh, our Dhamma Seva of remembering and discussing the Holy Dhamma? Yeah. Okay. I'm continuing <laughs> uh, with uh, the book of, uh, of Shivaram Swami Maharaj. And we're going rather gradually. Last week we had this uh, very nice initiation uh, ceremony of uh, Amrita Taruni. And uh, it's quite possible that next week, Saturday, we'll have another initiation. Uh, we have to see whether we're going to do that on Saturday or that'll be a separate thing. So we have been discussing the five types of dhammas, and the last of these uh, we may remember is the dhamma manifested by great devotees. And a little review, uh, the question arises, can or does a devotee ever establish the dhamma in a specific place by conscious effort? And Shivaram Swami says the answer is yes. <clears throat> um, and then he makes a, an analogy or a comparison just as a devotee can consciously and intentionally give bhakti uh, to another person. In other words, a devotee can preach and inspire others to take up uh, Krishna consciousness. Uh, in the same way, a devotee can establish a place as a holy place. Uh, he refers to Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's Madhurya Kadambini. Quoting here, he says, accepting subservience to his devotee, the Lord grants him the power um, to bestow the Lord's own mercy, Sva Kripa Shakti. 
giving preeminence to the devotee. So uh, he's identifying a specific shakti of Krishna, Krishna having unlimited potencies, generally divided into three, his Swarupa Shakti or Antaryami, Antaranga Shakti, his Tatasta Shakti, his Bahiranga Shakti. The Antaranga Shakti, sometimes called Swarupa Shakti. And as part of that Shakti, or one aspect of that uh, Swarupa Shakti, is his Svakripa Shakti, his own mercy energy or shakti and the lord can grant that he can empower his devotee to exercise that uh, shakti and in this way the devotee sorry in this way krishna is um, putting the devotee in the place of prominence rather than himself uh, and of course we understand uh, Lord Nityananda, in particular, is uh, put in a place of preeminence as being even more merciful uh, than Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, especially with respect to Jagai and Madai. Um, and we discussed about uh, the uh, very interesting case of initiation of uh, Vasudeva and Devaki, in which <clears throat> Vasudeva, by meditation, impregnates Devaki's heart uh, with the with the Lord, um, and we continued on with this to. Uh, where Shivaramaraj refers to Srila Prabhupada's making a point. Uh, and he is quoting Viraragava Acharya, or citing him, uh, that this transfer was completely a heart-to-heart -heart relationship. And then he said, Srila Prabhupada defines initiation in this context as the process by which the guru transfers Krishna from his heart to the heart of his disciple. Now, I wanted to um, go to this part in the Bhagavatam with some of the commentary we have. Well, we're showing lots of books these today, so I will also show uh, uh, this is... Translation by Gaurapada and edited by Matsya Avatar. And these are devotees of, uh, they were uh, students of Gopi Paranadana Prabhu. And they're doing a series called uh, A Symphony of Commentaries on the Tenth Canto. And this is another thick book. And this one volume, this is volume one, co covers only chapters one through three of the 10th canto. Um, as you may know, the 10th canto has 90 chapters. So my calculation is uh, this series, if they complete it, is going to be 30 volumes. Um, and they've done four or five or six volumes so far, I think. Mm, so anyway, <clears throat> so we have uh, this discussion or this event is going on in Canto 10, Chapter 2. And uh, we have verse number 18. And I'll read uh, this translation. This is uh, Vas, uh, Vasudev describing what Vasudev is doing. No, this is referring to the Lord as being transferred by uh, Vasudev, the son of Shura. 
Anyway, it goes like this. Afterward, he who is auspicious for the world, so this is the Lord, who comprises everything, and who already existed in her, in Devaki, uh, was meditatingly transferred by the son of Shura, this is Vasudeva. Just as the eastern direction harbors the moon or holds the moon, whose rays give bliss, so effulgent Devaki bore him an amsha of achuta in the heart. Okay, that's the translation. And then there's quite a bit of discussion from the commentators, especially about uh, what is meant by achuta angsha. And I won't go into that here. Uh, but um, we get a footnote um, by the authors here. Let's see, this is a footnote to, hmm. oh yeah. Okay, so, so Sridhar Swami is giving this, this comment. He says, she who is effulgent, that is the sense is, she is transcendentally existent. Uh, Devi, and then the Sanskrit Devi means Jyotamana, which means Shuddha Sattva. Uh, she, who is effulgent, sustained him who was completely placed, that is, by means of scriptural initiation. What? You may say. What a, what's going on here? Okay, so then we get a, a, a footnote. And the footnote says, Ganga Sahaya. And I have to confess, I don't know who is Ganga Sahaya, but he explains Sridhar Swami's statement as follows. Quote, at the time of initiation, the guru instructs the disciple about meditation. Then the latter, that is the disciple, makes the form of the Lord which had just been explained, enter his own heart. Similarly, Vasudeva locked, he locked, he fixed his glance in Devaki's eyes. Hari, the Lord, who was passing over to Devaki, appeared in her womb through sight, through seeing. Uh, that's from the Anvitarta Prakashika. Uh, yeah, Hare Krishna, I found that interesting. So again, it's kind of underlining the idea that uh, this initiation, uh, this transfer, this appearance of the Lord is happening through Vasudeva to Devaki as a kind of initiation. And this detail about how the guru practices initiation as uh, describing to the disciple the form of the Lord. And then the disciple takes that description and uh, draws it in to him or herself to worship, to meditate on. I found it. Quite interesting. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Having taken that little uh, side trip, um, we can continue. Well, there's more discussion on this subject of uh, the guru giving Krishna to the disciple. Um, then, 
Just as the guru or any other similarly empowered devotee can give Krishna, he can also give the Dhamma. Such great devotees, out of their desire to benefit others and by the power of the Dhamma within their hearts, sometimes manifest the Dhamma outside themselves. And then he gives the example of, he says, there is certainly no better example for us than our Srila Prabhupada, who, by his purity, created holy places the world over by establishing over 100 temples devoted to the worship of Krishna. And then Shiva Ramaraj uh, says something interesting. <clears throat> um, so he says, Prabhupada sanctified everywhere, everywhere that he went. Uh, and that includes um, airport lounges. <laughs> if he would sit in an airport lounge for a few minutes, then he was sanctifying that place. Of course, lecture halls, um, places that he visited and gave a lecture uh, some years ago. Uh, we were uh, told, I was in Oxford, and uh, we came to learn that Srila Prabhupada had visited Oxford and had given a lecture uh, in the city hall. Um, I don't know if the recording of that particular lecture is available. It would be interesting to find out. So we went to um, to the city hall of Oxford, which is a very beautiful building. It's a very elegant, older structure. And the hall in which Srila Prabhupada spoke is also very elegant. So it was a nice experience just to walk in and have the, uh, the thought that, oh, our Srila Prabhupada spoke uh, to people. And uh, they had kirtan, and people joined in the kirtan <laughs> in the hall. Uh, led by Srila Prabhupada, apparently. Um, so he's saying here, these places manifest themselves as tirtas, but these are more, you know, brief tirtas. They're more, you can say, temporary tirtas. Um, well, how temporary or long-lasting they might be. If he's, he's mentioning the, the temples, and I like to remember, uh, I like when, whenever visiting Bhaktivedanta Manor mm, to visit Srila Prabhupada's quarters upstairs. Uh, there's a very nice feeling of sanctity, a feeling of his presence in, in that, um, well, it's two rooms, uh, the main room, and then there's a bedroom and a bathroom. Uh, it's a very special place for me and for many devotees. Uh, he mentions here Tompkins Square Park or Hippie Hill in San Francisco. <laughs> These are also places, of course, Tompkins Square Park. Uh, I'm sure you know this is one of two parks uh, in Lower East Side, Manhattan, uh, where Prabhupada would take the devotees and he would chant. And uh, the particular tree under which Srila Prabhupada chanted in Tompkins Square Park has a plaque, has a sign on it. This is the Hare Krishna tree. Uh, it now has that um, sort of permanent identity as a place of, as a tirtha, a place of pilgrimage. Hippie Hill, uh, this is one particular uh, portion uh, of uh, uh, this park in San Francisco called Golden Gate Park. Uh, the devotees used to go. There's, I remember, one photo. They, the devotees took the deity of Lord Jagannath to this place <laughs> on the hill. And these, you know, young people, hippies at the time, you can say, uh, we're all sitting around and they made kirtan. After that, Srila Prabhupada said, mm, 
shouldn't take the deities out to the park. Uh, and then he refers to the many temples and farm communities. <clears throat> the presence of Srila Prabhupada, a Mahabhagavata devotee, not only purified the atmosphere of these places, but also established by Prabhupada's ardent, his strong desire, uh, true holy dhammas for the benefit of all those uh, who are fortunate enough to visit them. And then he calls attention to uh, Srila Prabhupada's desire to have Radha and Krishna in these temples. And of course, um, we understand by his desire, the Lord actually appears. Uh, and by his desire, the devotees continue the worship, um, not only in India, <laughs> uh, but uh, all over the world. Um, this was radical, and it was radical because it's generally understood uh, to worship the deity, you must be a Brahmin, and to be a Brahmin, you must be born in a Brahmin family. Uh, so Srila Prabhupada was breaking with that. Uh, even his own god brothers were criticizing. <laughs> they, um, they, they said, no, now you're going too far. Uh, but then um, he did it anyway, and then devotees became uh, Western devotees, took up the process, uh, accepted the the values, the practice, came back to India, uh, and uh, the devote the people saw that oh, this is something serious. Uh, some of Srila Prabhupada's god brothers uh, admitted uh, sometime later that they had made a mistake; they had not understood um, what Srila Prabhupada was doing. Um, okay, now I should check here in the chat and see if there's any questions. Oh, there's a longer from Mandali. Uh, others are greeting. Thank you all for the greetings. Okay, um, well, Mandali has written to me privately. Maybe I should check. <laughs> uh huh. Uh. Okay, um, yeah, that's an interesting question. <clears throat> okay, I'll summarize the question. Uh, <laughs> or should I, re should I just read it? Uh, it's going back to the subject of mamata, transcendental mamata. And the, the question is, how do we distinguish, or how, what would be the particular characteristics of someone who has the sense of mamata in relation to a particular deity and who is a pujari of that deity? Um, and the, the context of the question is, um, what if a devotee is worshiping a deity in a sort of, um, in such a way that it might be argued, or maybe that devotee is saying, well, this is my feeling of mamata. <laughs> but uh, it's, it ends, the end result is that other devotees feel discouraged from serving that same deity. 
So this is a bit of what we might call a loaded question. <laughs> and I don't know the particular uh, circumstance there, but uh, I guess I can imagine. Um, uh, so how would it look? My understanding of mamata, transcendental mamata, just as we understand that Shimati Radharani is, uh, is, is wanting to engage everyone in the Lord's service. She's inviting everyone to engage in the Lord's service. Uh, the more the merrier. So my understanding is that a, a, the transcendental sense of mamata uh, would be such that it would be in fact opening more uh, uh, giving, making more accessible the Lord to others. My Lord is so wonderful, I want everyone to worship him. <laughs> because I want everyone to experience how wonderful he is. Uh, the world doesn't appreciate my Lord, so I will urge everyone to worship my Lord so they can see how wonderful my Lord is. Uh, this would be uh, this would be my understanding. Uh, yes, Ananda Mayi, you wanted to comment. Uh, you were saying about Shla Prabhupada and his. Uh, his transcendental um, position. Oh, I'm sorry. I disappeared. Yeah. Uh, can I show one picture? Uh, say <laughs> something. <laughs> okay. Again, share screen. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is. Um, uh oh, you're gonna show <laughs> that picture. Oh my God. <laughs> this is from Indra Dumna Swami store, and the transcendental mood of Suhotra Swami here, in orange, and Indra Dumna Swami, and they are trying to touch their their feet, <laughs> and here you are, <laughs> and. Uh, I was thinking about how how the world transforms in such situations, such ecstasy. Like in the uh, Suhotra Swami was at that time really amazing. I remember he was uh, running, chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra with the basket, plastic basket on his head. And he, the devotees were running from one side of the hall to the other. And that was really amazing. <laughs> so the tra transformation was really... Uh, this picture came to me recently, so I was... Okay, thank you. About, about the Dhamma. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what Srila Prabhupada would have thought of this picture. <laughs> <laughs> These cr yeah. crazy Westerners. <laughs> Anyway, yes, that was uh, those were those were amazing times. And yes, yes. Suhotra Swami was uh, quite amazing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that's my thank you. This this was my understanding of transcendental mamata, um, and I hope that's okay. But yeah, this was certainly Srila Prabhupada's mood. Um, he he was installing Krishna, Radha, and Krishna in all of these different places because he wanted, you know, he wanted the whole world to worship them. Um, that was his mood. So I think we want to aspire to follow his mood 
in that respect also. Now it could be, having said all that, I think that's specifically in relation to uh, deities in public temples, uh, where someone has deities at home, there could, I would think, uh, be such a mood that um, one is having more of an exclusive attitude. I am, I, myself, my family, we worship Krishna here. Uh, these deities are not, we don't invite others to um, do particular services, although, you know, that could also <clears throat> be less than transcendental. Um, uh, one would think, one would like, uh, such a person would want to encourage people to come at least to have darshan, to join in sanghas and to sing for the deities. One would think Krishna would be happy with that. But um, everyone has different moods also. Some people, they want to be more, um, more to themselves, more reclusive. And mm, I would be hesitant to... Um, to say negative things about that inclination. Right, okay, so uh, I guess we can continue a few more minutes. Uh, Shivaram Swami next, he has a short section uh, dealing with this distinction of aprakata and prakata dhamma. Uh, in which the general point we can say is that all the manifest forms, prakata, are uh, understood to be uh, manifesting out of the aprakata dhamma, which means goloka dhamma, the place which we don't see in this world. Uh, and uh, the emphasis is on the non-difference of the two. So, um, <clears throat> Goloka Vrindavan and its unmanifest pastimes are eternally going on without interruption. And yet, from our perspective, Krishna and his abode appear. His pastimes continue for some time before coming to an end. And then he and the Dhamma disappear. Srila Prabhupada emphasizes that this duality exists only for conditioned souls. But transcendentalists, even on earth, quote, are always in the spiritual world where the Lord's pastime, pastimes are constantly manifest to them. And uh, incidentally, we've just been reading short, short episodes being sent once a day. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, now it's excerpts from Hayagriva Prabhu uh, from his recollections of Srila Prabhupada in Vrindavan. And uh, he's telling, Hayagriva was a uh, professor of English and he was quite a very good writer. And he, he wrote a book uh, called Vrindavan Days about Srila Prabhupada's uh, time in Vrindavan in 1972. And there's one very funny incident he tells. I may tell that later. But um, he's describing... Srila Prabhupada's uh, living at the Radha Damodar temple and some of the devotees were staying there uh, and he, he writes in a beautiful way. Uh, generally, we, we say when we're teaching someone writing that you have to write complete sentences uh, and we get very, you know, school teachers are always telling their students, you have to write a complete sentence. But no, not always. If you're an expert writer, 
you know when you can just write incomplete sentences. And Hayagriva does that to very great effect. Um, and I don't have that passage with me, but it's very nicely done where he's describing the atmosphere in the night, uh, uh, sleeping on the roof of the temple, of the Radha Damodar temple, the different sights and sounds uh, that he's experiences. He's experiencing uh, the moon is there, the, uh, the breeze, and then gradually how um, the uh, how Brindavan wake, wakes up, uh, the deities are awakened, uh, the temple is opened, and you suddenly you hear the uh, sound of the ladies coming to visit from Mangalarti, singing this ululululululu sound. <laughs> and he brings it all together in such a way that you really feel like you're there. And then Hayagriva is telling how Srila Prabhupada is giving his, his morning class. And in that class, he is making this uh, point that we've just read uh, about the non-difference of Vrindavan, uh, Boma Vrindavan, and uh, the Aprakata Vrindavan of Koloka. And Hayagriva tells us, he says, this made me so disturbed. I was so disturbed by this that after the class, I immediately went in to Srila Prabhupada's room. He said, I sort of rushed in to be in front of others because so many were coming to see Srila Prabhupada. Uh, so he, he was the first one in. He offered obeisance, and then, and then uh, he he expressed his doubt to Srila Prabhupada uh, that how can we how can you say that this Vrindavan is non different from Goloka Dham? What do we see here? We see birth, old age, disease, and death. We see pigs in the streets. We see dogs. We see dirt. We see garbage, and so on. And Prabhupada was very stern, very, um, very non-compromising with him. He said, you don't see because you are not perfect. <laughs> you are not perfect, therefore you do not see. And he said, you want to see God, you are demanding, show me God, but who are you to see God? <laughs> So in that way, he was saying, and then he went on to say, the dogs and the hogs, they are here because they are devotees, but they have been neglectful in their service, and therefore they had to take birth. They may have made some offense to the Holy Dom, and therefore they're, uh, they are here and uh, making some final purification, and then they will go back to Goloka. <laughs> So, so like that, he was uh, he was quite shocked. So then, um, Shivaramaraj discusses is another section called "Some Characteristics Common to All Five Manifestations of the Dhamma," uh, and he gives uh, let's see one, two, three different characteristics. And then there's going to be another section, some distinguishing characteristics of the five dhammas. Uh, so there are, there are things in common, and then there are things uh, that are distinct. Uh, so he goes again through each of the five uh, types of dhamma. Uh, and then he has a long section quite long about the difference between Boma Vrindavan and the Dhammas manifested outside Boma Vrindavan. And of course, all of this is leading up very gradually to what he wants to say about um, New Vrajadam, uh, which is going to be the main 
sort of object or topic of his eight volume book. Now, how it is to be understood that this place in, you know, southwestern Hungary can be considered non different from the Dhamma. So, what he's going to say basically is this is all by the empowerment of Srila Prabhupada, it's by his desire. He said, we are not making any claim to being specially qualified because someone may anticipate Shiva Ram Swami may be saying, well, now it's me. <laughs> He's saying, no, it's not me. It's Srila Prabhupada who is making this place sanctified and we are simply serving. So, uh, oh, um, before I Yeah, I'll just uh, read maybe one paragraph of this, and then I wanted to end with a very nice prayer by Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. So the first uh, common characteristic, he says, though the prakata and aprakata dhamma display significant differences, which he will discuss later, they also display one fundamental similarity. The former, that is prakata, is a replica of the latter. The word replica uh, means something like copy. It's like a perfect copy. <laughs> Whether in the spiritual sky or on earth, Sri Vrindavan Dham perpetually, that means always, displays the same alluring form, that means attractive form, and divine qualities being eternally situated in transcendence. Goloka or Gokula, Prakarta or Aprakarta, Krishna is forever performing his pastimes there. We should never mistake Boma Vrindavan to be a part of this material world. The Upanishads state, quote, the Vrindavan of this earth planet is actually situated in the spiritual sky. Unquote. Unfortunately, he does not give a reference for that. He generally gives it references when he quotes, but here he is not, so I don't know uh, which Upanishad that is. Uh, perhaps it's, uh, yeah, the, uh, what is it called? Tapaniya Upanishad. Mm. So then, Boma Vrindavan is the spiritual world without question. Yeah, and this is of course what Srila Prabhupada was in, uh, insisting and, uh, and he insisted that in order to see that we have to be perfect. <laughs> what does it mean to be perfect? Uh, well, it starts with hearing from uh, the perfect acharyas. That is that in itself is perfection, and we can say that uh, that perfection, uh, because that hearing is already going on, the perfection is already started, and so at least a significant degree of perfection must already be there in the fact that we take it as possible to, uh, for ourselves to have that perfection. It's possible to have that vision of Vrindavan. Well, uh, continuing with the theme of Dhamma Sevana, I may have mentioned that one 
type of dhamma sevana is to long for the holy dham, to long to visit or to reside in the holy dham. Srila Raghunath Das Goswami has written 10 prayers begging the Lord, begging Govardhan for residence in his proximity. So he's addressing Govardhan as a person, as, um, as the Lord or as the best of devotees of the Lord. And so he says in the first verse, I'll read the Sanskrit because it's very charming. Nijapati buja danda chatrabhavam prabhadya pratihata madadrishto danta devendra garva atula pritula shaila shreni bupa priyang me nijanikata nivasam dehi govardhanam tong. O Govardhan, please bestow upon me the privilege of living close to you. This is a nice translation. It's, uh, it's by uh, Dasharat Sutta Prabhu, a godbrother of mine whom I've never had the good fortune to meet yet. Um, <clears throat> o Govardhan, please bestow upon me the privilege of living close to you by the banks of Sri Radha Kunda. This is my most dearly cherished desire. I want to be near you because of your matchless and unparalleled glories. You assume the form of an umbrella and balanced yourself atop the umbrella stem of Sri Krishna's arm. And thus, you completely pulverized, which means made into powder, the false ego of Lord Indra, the king of the demigods, who had become intoxicated by arrogant pride. And you are also known to be the foremost king amongst all the multitudes of hills. Hmm. <clears throat> so, Atula Pritula Shaila Shreni Bhupa, the Lord uh, or the best or the king, Bhupa, protector, protector of the earth, Bhupa, you're the protector of the uh, you're the king of the Shaila Shreni, the, the series of, of hills or mountains, um, which is incomparable, Atula, um, Pritula, uh, of the earth, I suppose that means. Um, and so the con the prayers continue like that um, requesting nija nikasa nivasam dehi uh, give to me dehi um, a nivasa a residence which is uh, nikata nearby to nija to yourself govardhan so that's one form of uh, dhamma seva um, anyone would like to reside near to Govardhan? You're a little hesitant because you're thinking, oh, I don't know, it's very difficult um, climate in Govardhan. Guru Maharaj, can I say that? Uh, oops. Yes, go ahead. And I say that uh, with Dharma Gupta, we are living next to Govardhan because we have Govardhan Shila. Is, can we say that this is the same or? Ah, yes, why not? <laughs> <laughs> yes, 
Govardhan is very merciful. He makes himself portable. So, um, yeah. Anything more? I guess we can end, end there for today. Uh, and we got an a strong yes from Katyayani. She wants to live near Govardhan. I think Kavi I think Kavi Chandra also said yes, and Usha Madhuji is also saying yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have this Iskon residence uh, just next to Govardhan, but it's uh, it's for the gents only. <laughs> it's an ashram kind of a brahmachari ashram. Um, it, was, uh, it was a summer, I don't know if it was for the summer or if it was for some other season. Some, uh, some prince or king had this place as a residence and it went up for sale. Um, yeah, that was 30 years ago. No, wait, uh, not, yeah, maybe around 30 years ago. And then uh, Tamal Krishna Goswami arranged for it to be purchased. And then they made a major renovation. And it's a wonderful place. Uh, you can sit on the roof uh, and you have a, a panoramic view of uh, Govardhan Hill from, from the roof. You can, you can chant there. Mama Tamayi wants to go to Radhakunda, wants to stay at Radhakunda. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I heard that uh, like in Dham, Vrindavan Dham generally, like uh, any pious activity, it multiplies and even uh, any kind of sinful activity, it multiplies. So um, how careful should we like, uh, is it? Um, good for uh, devotees who are just like uh, us, like me, not us, myself, to be really staying in Vrindavan, right? unless we are very pure. Um, Srila Prabhupada encouraged devotees to stay and do service. If one is, uh, he always emphasized service in all, re you know, for anywhere and everywhere, anytime. Uh, so he, obviously he wanted uh, devotees and he wanted Western devotees also uh, to stay in Vrindavan to do service. Um, otherwise, Krishna Balaram Mandir, he wouldn't have had it built. Uh, so if the understanding, if we have that understanding, then I would say it is quite all right. And otherwise, yes, then it can be, um, one has to be very careful. Um, in any case, devotees are careful, um, but um, you know, the, these people who are just coming, like nowadays, now they're building so many flats all over um, Rindavan Mathura area and uh, as the middle class of India uh, becomes more prominent, they're looking for places um, as second homes and a sort of logical place for uh, people in the Delhi, greater Delhi area is to have a place in Vrindavan. And that's, that's nice. Um, whether most people who come to Vrindavan to stay, whether they have that understanding that, okay, now I'm in the Holy Dham, I need to uh, do some proper service here. I don't know if those people, so many of those people have. I, I wonder about that. Um, in contrast, we understand uh, Navadvip Dham, Mayapur Navadvitam is, you know, it's like 
all merciful, uh, you can just sleep in Vrinda, in Mayapur and and get benefit like you're doing Dandavat <laughs> Parikrama and so on. <laughs> we get these kind of <clears throat> mahatmyas. Uh, but there is, uh, I understand, there is this contrast. We want to be careful. Uh, we should be careful also in Mayapur, Navadvitam, we should be careful everywhere. Uh, but it's especially, especially in Vrindavan. Okay, we're going a little over our time. So what to say except thank you all so much for your kind uh, participation taking this time um, and uh, yes all the best for this next week um, there's so many things going on you can take part in connected with uh, ISKCON activities there's a there's this reading week thing maybe it's over now but um, there's what kirtan week coming up i can't keep track anymore there's i think from the 17th to the 23rd there's kirtan uh mela or something um and uh and of course does anyone know the date uh the beginning of the month of kartik Yes, the first of uh, November. First of November. The, yeah, at least uh, I can see in my calendar that is from Belgium. Okay. From Radadesh, that is first of November. Okay. Somehow I thought it was earlier, but whatever. So you can start thinking about that. Uh, what to do special. Especially uh, during Kartik, maybe we should do something this um, in the Saturday Sangha. I guess uh, I can take suggestions for what to do during this time. And otherwise, I'll say thank you all very much. Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda ki jai, Sri Vrindavan Dhamma ki jai. Shri Radha Shyama Sundara Ki Jai Gora Premanande Hare 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 Krishna Guru Maharaj Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Thank you Hare Krishna Maharaj Hare Krishna Jai